Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. We are talking about the Great Awakening, how you can recognize your own awakening, and why this is a powerful time for starseeds to wake up and step forward. This is a show with Steve Noble, and he is a very refreshing and interesting metaphysical and spiritual teacher. Steve, thank you, and welcome back to Quantum Conversations. Hi, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Well, a conversation with you is always very helpful to so many because it helps us identify things that are going on in our life that we are not even aware of. So mm. let's talk about this. When we talk about awakening and this great awakening that's occurring, what does that mean to you? Yeah, well... Um, I'd heard about this great awakening from a number of spiritual teachers and uh, it sounded like a great idea, you know, um, Alice Bailey, the channel in, the, uh, in Britain in the early 30s and 40s talked about this new age coming and the, lots of kind of prophecies, people getting excited about the age of Aquarius, you know, I remember seeing that film, was it Hair, wasn't it? This is the <laughs> dawning and all this kind of thing and it was a bit kind of, sound like a good idea but I wasn't really sure about any of this um, and then I had my own kind of wake up in the 90s where I began to I was really searching for something for many years but the awakening happened when my father died and I had this experience of awakening which was um, one where my old life increasingly stopped fitting with who I felt I was being or becoming um, it took about uh, certainly over a period of three months this feeling of my old identity, something old was dropping away and something new was coming and then I had uh, the experience of synchronicity which I never had any, I, I never even had the word for it and um, being in the right place, flow, all these things and then I started meeting, meeting people, teachers and suddenly it started becoming real for me in my life rather than just a concept that sounded good in some new age book, you know. And uh, my life did start to change rapidly. I was married at the time, and my now ex-wife was not very happy with this awakening process. I wouldn't, I didn't call it an awakening process at the time. I just called it something odd is happening to me, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I had to find people who would guide me, and I really within six months found a lot of people that I, I started to trust, and I found a lot of teachers who I started to follow there. Um, wisdom, their input, a, a number of them from America actually, I found a lot of really good channels in America that started to make more sense, suddenly all the old books of philosophy and history were wiped off and I started having all these channels material and of course my ex-wife just thought I'd lost the plot and um, eventually we, we separated and I <clears throat> found myself on a very fast track of, of spiritual growth, I, I found this teacher who I followed for about 10 years her name's Jill Edwards, she's not with us anymore, um, and I followed her, and she really opened me up. I, I really trusted her because she had a very good left brain as well as a very awakened right brain, and she, she seemed to embody um, groundedness and common sense. She wasn't just talking about love light and everything. I, she talked sense to me, and so I followed that, and uh, my life started changing quite dramatically. I had another awakening in 2010, which was very painful. And then I started to realize that this whole great awakening was real. Um, my life went through a dark night of the soul. And on the other side, I started getting connected with all kinds of beings, angels, star beings, all kinds of beings were coming. And by this time... I'd kind of let go of all resistance, I think. I'd been through such a hard time that if they said to me, channel the goddess, I'll go, fine, you know, I'll do it, which is actually what they did say. We want you to do a transmission. To the very, I think the very first one was, because um, I've been doing all these transmissions for a few years, was on the goddess, which I did in Greece. And 
at the beginning, I kind of said to them, but I haven't got a womb, but they didn't seem to be too, care, uh, too bothered about that, so I, I, I did it. And so I, I, my life started to change rapidly. Um, I started to release. My life was really about a lot of struggle and suffering. For the first 30 years of my life, I said I, I went through incredible pain, struggle, suffering. I went through psychotherapy for about 13 years. Uh, my marriage was really a safe harbor from, from what I consider the painful world. And then when I started waking up, I had to let go of that painful harbor. I had to come out. My life changed rapidly in the sense of my relationships, my energy levels, my work changed dramatically. Um, my spiritual life began to explode. It became the most important thing in my life, actually, my spiritual life, whereas before I didn't really even have any sense of what it was connecting with my higher self, connecting with beings. So all of this made this ascension process very real for me. It made what's happening in the world very real. I became actually at the same time very much interested in world events. And I still am very interested in world events, what's going on the world stage, because I think it's a reflection of the ascension process, because the ascension process is essentially one of clearing out lower frequency energies. It's clearing out what I call dark forces, um, and those dark forces on the astral plane and on the earth itself, which are what people call Illuminati forces. And we're seeing really this, this light-dark interplay going on now between um, you know, the forces that want to keep the planet as, as it is, and even kind of decrease the frequency. We've got endless war after 9-11. Uh, you, you in America, you kind of know what's happening over there. And I'm in Britain. And Britain and America are very involved in on the world stage in wars and conflicts and selling arms to unpleasant dictatorships and all of that kind of thing. So this is the interplay going on at the moment. We've got a lot of light going on the planet and a lot of darkness that's presenting itself. And certainly in the last 20 years, that darkness has erupted across the planet. Um, whereas it was a bit more hidden before, because the dark, what I call the dark forces, are very worried about this ascension process. They're not interested in it. They don't want it to happen. They want to do everything they can to block it. And so, of course, war and conflict is one very good way, tried and tested way, of keeping the planet's energy low. It's almost like a, a black magic kind of experiment in blood sacrifice, if you could say. Um, so we're going through this... On the one hand, lots of light, lots of amazing things happening, lots of teachers. The energy of the planet certainly increased uh, over the last two decades. More possibility, um, lights, light workers and star seeds waking up, and at the same time, darkness on the planet. There's this interplay. So we're going through a period of that for a while. Um, sorry, I'm rambling on, Lauren. I hope that did I answer some of the question. Oh, absolutely. We always love to hear you talk because you said a lot of helpful things there, and it's really interesting that the outer world is a reflection of this ascension process. This great awakening, then, this is where people are really tapping into their own inner knowingness and this realization that they're here to bring back this incredible light, right? Yeah. So I would say now more than ever, bring forth this light. There are things that are in the way. Our light is limited because of so much in the way. So talk a little bit about this because this clearing process, we want to move through this clearing process so quickly. Yeah. So what are some of the ways that we can do that? Okay, so um, resistance to the light is is normal, as they say in Star. You know, was it? Well, they say resistance is futile in Star Trek, wouldn't they? <laughs> Actually, I'd say it's normal. Uh, initially, it's normal anyway. Certainly, in the beginning, resistance is normal. It can be, you know, my life's fine, or um, my life's not fine, but I've got no idea about this kind of process, so I'm not going there. You know, better the devil you know, kind of thing. We've developed through many lifetimes in the 3D paradigm a very dense and controlling ego. I would say. And that ego, which hasn't just developed in this lifetime, you know, you can see it in kids as they come in when, when they're very little, their egos are fully like, I ain't doing this, I'm, you know, they're little warriors or whatever. So we've developed an ego over a long time. And we, we need an ego to get through 3D matrix because the 3D matrix is dangerous and difficult. So we develop this kind of 
almost like these energy structures in our energy field that help us navigate. But eventually, um, certainly when the ascension process happens, these energy structures have got no idea how to help us and then start resisting the process. You know, we have, for example, we may develop an energy structure which is around pleasing people yes. to get by, you know. And, and mm -hmm. so once we, we start um, being called to being more authentic, our pleasing self might go, I'm confused because this is the way I am. You know, I've been, I'm trained. This is how I get through the world, by pleasing and helping or sacrificing mm -hmm. or even rescuing. So we have to ditch that. And, of course, that programming doesn't want to go very easily. We may have um, learned to move through the 3D matrix through becoming a, an achiever by moving, by action, by doing stuff. You know, people are always on the move. And so when the ascension process happens and we are asked to tune into our inner light, that energy goes, I've got no idea what you're talking about. We're supposed to be moving here. We're supposed to be achieving, climbing the ladder. We may have developed a very strong critic, which is quite common in most people, you know, which, which is always telling us how stupid we are or how fat we are or how we'll never make it or how to be careful of this, that, and the other. And so these energies have got no idea of how to maneuver in this new map, which is being created in this new um, 4D, 5D ascension process. You know, the 3D is rocks are hard and water's wet. But 5D isn't like that. You know, we create our own reality uh, individually and collectively and all this kind of stuff. And our ego has got no idea. So initially, the resistance is the higher self starts calling us and the ego goes, no, I'm not having it. I'm not trusting this. I don't believe in this. And there's an inner fight that often goes on in people. With, when more light comes in, these old lower frequency ego structures fight for their own survival, actually. And the ego is quite strong. I mean, literally, the ego will kill you to protect you. Um, it's kind of a strange uh, paradox, isn't it? But uh, uh, for example, if you remember the uh, Wall Street crash, you know, that what happened, a lot of people were jumping out of very high buildings because their ego says, we can't cope with this. Better to kill yourself than live with this reality. So the ego is quite strong. Its defense mechanisms will even kill you to, to so-called protect, protect you in itself, really in a crazy kind of paradigm. So the ego is our first resistance, and the ego has common resistance patterns. When the light comes in, it might, it might create busyness. It might create conflict. Um, these are really common ways of avoiding the light. I mean, I know in my process, when I've ever come to a really important crossroads, I've uh, found drama, conflict increase. Uh, some people might have self-doubt increase. They might have guilt, shame, blame increase. They might feel the need to, of perfectionism. It's got to be perfect. They might feel also um, fear is also the biggest resistance pattern, isn't it? You know, um, if you imagine, I think the, the analogy I always use is here you are in your safe harbor. Even if that si safe harbor is not very pleasant, because a lot of people don't have pleasant lives, but the, the, the life they have feels familiar and safe, you know. So they keep it regardless. I'm not sailing out into the ocean and finding out what's out there. So... Um, we need to develop courage, and that's the kind of turning point where we, we start to, to say, okay, I'll sail my boat out of the harbor and find out what's out there. But usually when that happens, the pain of being in the harbor has to get so great that we overcome our resistance patterns. Now, resistance doesn't only show up internally. It also shows up externally. And external resistance, of course, is a reflection of our internal resistance. The doubting committee turns up. You know, people's mother-in-law phones us up, say, "Are you crazy? What are you doing with your life? I've heard that you're re resigning from your job and you're going off to India." You know, all this kind of thing. Family can be a huge source of resistance. Um, star seeds mm -hmm. in 3D families will find a lot of resistance from their families because a 3D family will not understand the star seed. They'll categorize them as the dark sheep or black sheep or whatever, and they'll in some way, they may seek to block your spiritual path or gifts, um, and that's very common, actually. I deal with lots of clients where their families are energetically blocking them somehow. They have cords in the throat and the third eye and these kind of things from family members who are unconsciously trying to protect them by blocking their light because this is what they think will keep them safe. So, uh, of course, resistance can also show up in the, in the culture, for example, 
if you're living in Iran or if you're living in some country where you know, fundamentalism is quite strong, again, resistance can show up because it's scary to uh, reveal your true light in some cultures, so there could be cultural blocks as well. Um, also what can happen, once the spiritual path starts to get underway, resistance can show up from past lives or other lifetimes, which is another whole field, but that's not the initial process, that's when you're on, on the path. Um, I remember feeling terrible fear at a certain point in my journey early on, and that fear was not generated from this lifetime, it was generated from past life trauma, um, and then I, I started to have spontaneous regressions where I started to experience those lifetimes, and that cleared up a lot of stuff for me. Once I realized, you know, hey, I was burnt, so it, of course it makes sense when you're burnt alive to resist being a healer or a, on the spiritual path because it's really scary, you know. Being burnt alive is a pretty strong experience, you know, and I, mm. that was one of my experiences and lots of others of um, past lifetime energy showing up going, you can't do this. So when you step on the path, expect all kinds of resistance from all kinds of areas. But the great thing about this lifetime is that this lifetime gives us the opportunity to clear up masses of lifetimes, masses of stuff can be cleared up in this. This is why this lifetime is so important as an awakening, but also a massive clearing that can happen as well. Okay, well that's fascinating because you said spontaneous regressions, right? This would just yeah. be a knowingness in your own life that would pop up, right? And so would you say that just your awareness of it uh, allowed you to integrate that aspect or be whole again? Well, what happened was um, early on in my awakening, this was about, so I started waking up in 91, 1991, my father died January that year, so by, by about 93 or 4, I was sitting in the bath reading a book about the witch burning times actually in Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember feeling incredible anger and fury about it. And then I, and also fear around it. And I, when I sat with it, I thought this doesn't make any sense because obviously my family were atheists. Nobody cared about witches, particularly, you know. And um, when I sat mm. with it, I decided this must be something else. And so I followed the feeling yes. as, in a, in meditation. And that feeling led me to a whole spontaneous past life experience of being burned. I think in northern France actually. And I remember the being taken on some kind of wagon with two other people, I think it was a woman, into this vast field and they had these stacks of wood, three of them, and, and a pole in the middle. And I, the next thing I remember was being in the midst of this, I couldn't see any fire but I, I remember lots of smoke and choking incredibly. And I had a throat problem uh, at the time and that cleared up after I, I was asphyxiated and I researched afterwards and found out a lot of people actually were killed by smoke rather than the flames, so, which, which is a good thing probably. <clears throat> and so that experience um, cleared up a lot of challenges I was dealing with in my life at the time. I was working in an area where there was a lot of fundamentalist religious people, both Muslim and Christians working, and I felt a lot of anxiety around being with these people because they're always far too interested in what I was interested into spiritually, you know. I remember my boss who was a born again Christian pointing to a crystal I was wearing with a kind of accusing finger going, what's that? And I felt really kind of under investigation by these people. So as soon as I had the regression that all went, all the fear went. I didn't have any fear of persecution by, you know, weird fundamentalists. So I think that's the point of uh, past life regressions is it clears up stuff in this lifetime. It's not really about voyeurism. What's, it, what's the word? Voyeur, voyeurism? Voyeurism. voyeurism. Yeah. voyeurism. <laughs> it's not about being a spiritual tourist going, I wonder what I was. It's, it's really about programs mm. which are blocking us now that come from other places. And once we realize it, there's a lot of help around us that can help us clear up these blocking energies now. Wow, yes, beautiful. That is a really good process then. I love how you shared that because it does assist us to become aware of this. And you know, some folks may find it helpful to go to a 
past life regressionist, maybe the first or second time, or even a, a CD to kind of get become aware of what that really feels like to remember something like that. Mm -hmm. Because then for you, yes, recognizing the feelings that popped up because you were reading a book, that's really key, right? And so everyone, if we were to look at that in our own lives and and just go inside and take the time to sit with it, we'll be able to decode it or understand it and to get that uh, wholeness from that. You talked about the energy structures that we create, and it, it comes from belief systems, mm. right? So we may feel, for example, you said pleasing people, or how about the caring what other people think program, right? And so if you're out and looking at the world, every person that passes by is going to trigger that belief system. So it's almost like it really starts with a belief system, and that's an energy structure right there. So yeah. this is really helping us see how we really create from an unknown perspective in this 3D matrix. So as we move into higher frequencies of 5D, clearing out these programs, it is essential to being able to be in that higher perspective. What was that process like for you after you were able to clear this all out? Oh, yeah. Well, th that was the initial process. Um, I've been doing it practically, not every day, but um, um, I trained in a number of systems which work at neutralizing programming and resistance from all kinds of sources. So I've, I've become mm -hmm. quite good at finding out, for example, if I'm moving towards a goal or or doing something and I'm feeling resisting energies, I'm pretty good now at finding out where is it coming from because, you know, initially it's just, it feels like there's resistance. Well, is it coming from me? Is it somebody externally kind of blocking me? What, what's going on? So it's good to find out where, where in me do I fear? Is there any fear in me or is there any resistance such as um, anxiety or any of that kind of stuff? Or is it sometimes it's other people that are actually going, uh, I don't want you to do this. Imagine family members getting together going, we don't want our daughter going off doing, and so they may energetically be projecting all kinds of energies. So it's really good to find out the source. Um, for example, I, I made a, so I made this big move recently from living in London for 60 years to coming to the east coast of Sussex. And during the process, I can feel all kinds of resistance in me. You know, it was a big step. So it's kind of natural for, to feel resistance, but actually the resistance didn't feel it was coming from me. I felt, no, I feel fine. I don't feel any fear or anxiety. And there were people around that for whatever reason were blocking this process. Uh, um, people in my partner's life blocking her from moving forward, and there was somebody in my own reality that was kind of doing something. And I really had to sit and neutralize all these resistances. Uh, become, first become aware of it, and then th there's various energies that you can call upon to neutralize these things. And so then the flow returned. You know, uh, any time we're out of flow, there's a resistance happening. So the moment I'm back in flow, I know the resistance has been neutralized. When I'm out of flow again, and you know, flow can feel like stuckness, things not working properly, things getting in the way, uh, even like silly accidents. Actually, before I moved here, I fell down. I fell down two or three steps carrying something, and mm -hmm. I really badly damaged my left foot. I thought I broke it actually, and it was really inconvenient to before moving to do that kind of thing. But fortunately, once I cleared the resistance, my foot healed up almost within a day or so. It's really incredible because resistance can also show up as as physical issues in the body. You know, accidents, all kinds of things. So it's really good to be able to res to clear these things. So really, the more you go on the path, the more it's really a multidimensional. We're multidimensional beings, and resistance can also be multidimensional. It can be your family. It can be a past life. It can be parts of your ego. It can be your inner child going, I'm not sure about this. It can be all kinds of things. So the further you go down the path, it's really good at become, it, it, it developing this intuition or this um, guidance also because I'm also told, you know, I get beings tell me, oh, check this out or check that out. So that's also part of the journey, you know, 
25 years ago at the beginning, I was really new going, I, I, I've got resistance, I need help. I, I used to go and see healers because I, I didn't know how to do it for myself. So now I do. So I, I very rarely go and see healers these days. So it's uh, um, obviously everyone, the ideal is that everyone develops the tools to do it for themselves. Eventually that will happen the further we go down the ascension path, I believe. Yes, just like we were saying with the past life regression, those are beautiful assistants to help us get into that memory, but then we can do it ourselves. And so it is a beautiful process. It just all leads everyone along the path. So that's mm -hmm. part of the journey, too, for people just to take the time to connect with their own person who can empower them like mm -hmm. that. There's nothing better than our own inner knowing. We, we can go deep inside to start clearing that because it is the energies then. And as you said when we started this call, uh, the energies are supporting us now. So when we, when we think about these, these energies that are coming in, they're definitely new energies. How yeah. can we really work with them to elevate right now? Where do you think people are from the people that you're working with? At the moment, there's about 1% of the world population probably are starseeds, but that, that percentage is increasing. And light workers starseeds, you know, and, and obviously they cluster in groups. And so if you're living in a light worker area like London or maybe Austin in Texas or maybe, you know, um, parts of California, then you're going to feel like it's a greater percentage. But actually light workers do kind of cluster. Light workers are in every country. Starseeds are in every country. And these are the pioneers that wake up first. They've been waking up for decades. And, you know, some of the early ones like John, John Lennon, David Bowie, these kind of types, and, or even a very early one like Tesla, you know, the, not the current life Tesla, but the other, you know, the older, what's his, Nikolai Tesla, these earlier starseeds um, coming in. These kind of beings, um, starseeds have a natural ability to connect with higher forces, higher intelligences, higher self, angelic forces, star beings around them. Um, so Nikolai Tesla, for example, was being inspired by all kind in his dreams. You know, you get all the experimentation in his dreams. He'd work it all out in his dream state. Mm -hmm. This is not what the mass can do. 99% of the population can't do this. So star seeds, really, when they start working up, they really awaken to their multidimensional nature. They're guided by all kinds of types of guides, you know, there are many different levels of guides. Guides are multidimensional. There's earth guides. There's, you know, even in crystal, mineral, plant, shamanically, animal, there are all kinds of helpful forces on the earth plane. There are human guides on the other side. Many, most, everyone on the earth plane has guides of some kind, but the, it's the level of guides that they have. A star seed would tend to have higher level guides. Someone who's been on the planet locked in this reincarnational cycle for, for a long time would tend to have, you know, Auntie Millie or Uncle Bob telling them to watch out, you know, tie their shoelaces up in the mornings, this kind of this kind of level of advice. So anyone who's been to a spiritualist church will hear a lot of that kind of, you know, kind of guides that come through are like relatives who are trying to give kind of highly practical advice, you know. Um, but star seeds have higher frequency um, angelic forces, star beings. So, so mm. star seeds can wake up. Once they start waking up, they can wake up to this. The masses, 99% of the collective conscious, have guides of a sort and ancestral guides or current guides that might help them in all kinds of very practical ways, but they're not really going to help them awaken or step up in the ascension process. The mass population, I believe, is going to wake up through revelation and what I mean by that is ever since 2012 trigger or the choice point was passed, you're finding lots of um, whistleblowers coming out. I think the major one started 2013, Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, um, uh, Chelsea Manning. They all came after this 2012 point where people are starting awakening. And then these, these whistleblowers are themselves um, starseeds. But they're awaken their job is to awaken up the masses. So WikiLeaks, you know, um, obviously it's in America, it's, it, it, I think Hillary Clinton was kind of, um, oh, you're just hearing all that from WikiLeaks. But it did have an effect uh, of some kind on the elections probably. But 
it's kind of waking up people to what's really going on from, on, in the name of the governments, you know, you know um, what they're doing in the Middle East, all that kind of stuff. And it's shocking. And also, 9-11 was a kind of awakening point for the masses. Mm -hmm. After 9-11, lots of people started waking up questioning mm -hmm. official stories. So the masses are not going to awaken up by, I don't believe by angels or by, they may, some of them may through religious uh, get a kind of feel for it, but they won't wake up in the same way that star seeds will wake up. Star seeds are, are the way showers, they're the map makers, they're the dream weavers, they're the ones creating this shift. And, um, and then of course people on the planet are in the 99% have a choice, whether they want to continue, you know, if they want to continue waking up or start waking up, or go off somewhere else, and a lot will probably go off on another 3D timeline because this planet's ascending. As more and more star seeds come here, the planet, the consciousness of the planet will shift. In 50 years' time, you won't recognize this planet. It's already changing at a rapid, very rapid rate, and that's really because the star seeds are coming in now. I know that so many of us want to assist and create platforms for the younger generation of starseeds to really be able to step up. And so I believe we do that by being connected to our higher selves and allowing them to feel that that's a beautiful way to be instead of coming across as new age or woo-woo. Yeah, Show sure. them that it's okay to be that way. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of um, <clears throat> the early star seeds, as I mentioned, John Lennon and David Bell, inspired a lot of people to start waking up to new ways of thinking. You know, the energies of the 50s was, was shifted by the 60s, um, mm -hmm. even though it didn't really land totally. The, sh the 50s was all that kind of highly conservative stuff was ended. And this really helps a lot of star seeds who've come in afterwards. So a lot of work that people have done in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, has really laid the foundation for these new waves of star seeds coming in. And the new waves coming in, a lot of them have never been here before, I believe. And that's why they're really struggling with um, highly authoritarian education systems is the main problem for a lot of these kids coming in. Or a lot of them are coming in with high sensitivity. They can't tolerate chemical environments. They can't tolerate meat diets. They can't tolerate meat diets. Um, so these, these, these new star seeds, a lot of them are coming in with parents who are star seeds, or at least one parent who's a star seed. And just having a parent who's a star seed helps anchor them, helps energetically hold them. Uh, even if the parent hasn't fully woken up, it doesn't matter. Just having them there is just such a huge benefit. Because for these new ones coming in, if they have 3D families, that's going to be torture for them, to be honest. Um, so a lot of people have come into dark families, clearing the bloodlines, uh, clearing the way, coming into cultures which are a bit dark, opening the cultures up. Um, and so, yeah, we're here to really help these new, new, new star seeds. And I have this platform on YouTube where, where all these transmissions, energetic transmissions are, are up there. And I get a lot of people, parents, saying, my young daughter who's eight absolutely loves them, you know, which wasn't the intention. but. So young kids, may, they may not understand all the content of what I'm doing, but they feel the energy of me and go, Mom, I just love it, or it helps them feel safe sleeping or something, you know, this kind of thing. So, I mean, that was unintended because I wasn't feeling that my, my mission is working for helping these really young star seeds. But I've um, got two children who are not star seeds, I don't think. They're, my ex-wife was not, <laughs> definitely not a star seed. So... They came in when I was asleep, and so they're not particularly star seeds. My grandchildren are, I think, and they love all these healing energies. They love all the stuff, the angels and mermaids and unicorns, and they're also very easy to heal. They've got no filters blocking them from, from healing, even very severe injuries. You know, my granddaughter had a severe injury, which healed very, very quickly. I was doing some meditation work with her, and she loved it. And, you know, my daughter was amazed at how quickly she healed. And so she kind of is stepping aside going, Granddad, do whatever, we, Dad, do your weird stuff, 
you know, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the results uh, sh uh, uh, have, have kind of convinced her that something's going on. Oh, that is so beautiful that those kids are so connected, that your grandkids are that way. And so let's define starseed. I know we've talked about this before. Any of us who have ever felt that we were in on the wrong side of the family, right? Maybe we should have been in, in with our cousins over here or never really fitting in, feeling yeah. kind of like a loner. That means that we could have had other past lives on this planet, but we've also had other lives off planet as well. Is that your definition of a star seed? Yeah, yeah. Um, the star seeds are well. Let's let's back up a little bit. This planet's been, I would say, a dark planet for a long time. And what that means is, um, rather than a sacred planet, what that means is the consciousness of the planet's been very low. Yeah. For a long time. And for people who, who want to question that, I just say, well, read the history books of the planet. You know, I've studied history, and it, it's war after war. It's slavery. It's mm -hmm. grabbing resources. It's, you know, uh, genocide. Of course, there are some great things as people evolve. And, but actually, the evolution is, always speeds up through war, actually. It's very strange. Second World War it speeds up a lot of scientific inventions and also a lot of social change, World War I and World War II, certainly in Britain anyway. Um, so we have this. Um, now, starseeds have not been here. Some of them have come in quite early on because this planet was a 5D planet really way, way back. And they've experienced lifetimes in Lemuria, <clears throat> lifetimes in Atlantis. And they may even have had other lifetimes along the way, you know, um, just to orientate themselves in this 3D dimension. There's a lot of Starseed's job is to orientate themselves. So they're the, they're the kind of pioneering scouting group, you know, like I believe I'm one of those. I've uh, been here for a while, so I've had lots of lifetimes here. But there are other dimensions of the Earth that, that Starseeds can also have lifetimes in. But a Starseed primarily doesn't feel the Earth is their home. They look at the planet and go, it's not quite home, I'm here, but you know, maybe this family doesn't feel like home, the planet doesn't feel like home, I feel different, as you said, I don't fit in. Uh, the, a, one of the symptoms is a great sensitivity, a sensitivity to energy. Um, they may even look at the world and go, the world looks a bit insane, actually. John Lennon said famously, the world is being run by insane people. And, Mm. You know, when I first heard that, it was quite radical, but I think that's a kind of starseed awakening, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they're drawn to alternative pathways. They can be quite way out. They can be closet hippies. I know I'm a closet hippie. <laughs> you know, I, I never managed to be a hippie. Uh, my father put his foot down. And he said, I don't want any hippies in this house, you know. I, I know. My parents were scared of them and made me scared of them. Yeah, I was scared of... He, he, he said a drug taping dropout hippies. Yep. And streakers. We had streakers. Oh, did you? Oh. But it sounds like a lot of fun, I thought. You know, <laughs> you know, I think I've missed out so much. You know, uh, I'm now coming out of the closet. I've got psychedelic shoes, which my, my daughter is hey. horrified by. She said, oh. you're regressing to childhood, Father. You know, really. Yes. Yay. <laughs> isn't that what we do in 5D? We can be... We can be authentic like that and not care what other people think. In a totally. Way. Yeah. Oh, yes, totally. Mm -hmm. But star seeds have a sense of a mission, which is beyond, like, I'm going to create yeah. a big house and a business that earns me a lot of money, you know, or have a wife that's really beautiful with five kids, that kind of mission. Um, nothing wrong with those things, but the mission is deeper. And a star seed has a feeling they're here to do something important, but they can't remember what it is. Now, I remember as a kid growing up, as a teenager, feeling different. Uh, I didn't really think I was unique. I just felt I was odd, different. I couldn't drink alcohol. It affected me too badly. I wasn't interested in what a lot of my friends were interested in. So I, I kind of thought there's something I don't quite feel. There's something wrong with me. But when eventually they, Star Seed starts to wake up to their true nature, they start to get on track with what they're really here to do. The life starts transforming. And, before that time, life could be a bit difficult, can be tough, can be hard. You know, they may feel that something wrong with them, or that nothing really works really well, or they're not really happy. Um, and then when they start understanding about energy, they can start clearing out energies from their field. They can start bringing back more of their own authentic light. They can start um, 
dropping other people's expectations or visions or values and find, well, what's my own vision, values, dreams, you know, these kind of questions. They go deep inside, the, the inner light begins to be switched on. They start to integrate um, the masculine and feminine within them. Um, they, they may feel a deep pain around this disconnection that's going on in the world between the masculine and the feminine, which is part of the 3D matrix. You know, there's a, a kind of conflict that's been going on for, for, for years, you know, thousands of years really, where the patriarchy, which is part of this 3D matrix, has sought dom dominion over the feminine energies and all feminine aspects have been disowned, you know. So in our current world, science and logic are highly valued above intuition and creativity often, you know. So there's healing all this kind of thing. And then they start getting on track with their mission. And a lot of light workers are here to heal, to awaken their DNA, to become light workers, healers, spiritual teachers, channels, uh, even intuitive guides, spiritual coaches. There's a lot of people who have come here to work with nature, the land, with the kingdoms of nature, plant, mineral, animal, these kind of things, ley lines, communities, living communities. Um, a lot of people I know, star seeds are drawn to that. There are a lot of star seeds who are drawn to creative uh, awakening process. So David Bowie's, the, the you know the John Lennon's, they go into music, and they start waking people up through their lyrics and their music. Um, there are some that go into the scientific realm, like the modern day Tesla, the current life Tesla. You know, sending a well, he sent a car into space. You know, crazy idea, really. But only a star seed would think of something so crazy as that, really. Um, a lot of star seeds are going into science. A lot of star seeds are becoming whistleblowers to bust the old systems. Um, and there are uh, some people who are, who are just awakeners who are just here to help wake up other star seeds. Uh, and some star seeds are here to really their mission is to parent. They're here to bring in the new star seeds, help with children. That's a big one for a lot of star seeds. So <clears throat> this is the mission that's kind of it's it's bigger than than their family or how much money they get. It's about world transformation, world awakening. And in the beginning, that's, that it's not, it doesn't kind of formulate like that, but the further you go down the path, it's not just about shifting my reality, it's about shifting the whole world. Um, and that's when you get a, enough people awakened to that idea, the world shifts. Yes, and that is why it's so important to really support people in living their passion bringing that passion up from within because yeah. that is totally related to the work and the mission and the purpose that they're here to do. And that's not always easy, but like you said, once we're on that path, one foot in front of the other, we get there stronger and stronger. And yeah. I do want to say that we did a, an online healing retreat and it was dreaming the new you into creation and it was very helpful, the processes that you offered in that, mm -hmm. and really going deep within to feel the energy. And you can really feel the cords. These are energetic cords that mm -hmm. uh, attach, and, and then they really limit us. So that I found that very helpful personally, and I know that one will help others. That was a, a very cool online healing retreat with you. Well, I, yes. Yeah, and so I wanted to talk about the new grids. You had mentioned, you know, some are here to work with the ley lines. We have a lot of people that are just called to put crystals out on the planet, to travel certain places on the planet. And yeah. this is really creating the new grid system, activating it or giving it codes, and we're receiving codes too. Can you talk a little bit more about this new grid system? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's two main grids that um, I work with, which I believe are driving the whole ascension process. One is a galactic grid, which kind of encircles the whole planet. We're being held in it. And it's really been bombarding the planet now for, well, increased since 2012 that's increased, but it, it was always there before. And this has been breaking down the old control, energetic control structures around the Earth. And there have been various control grids around the Earth to keep the, the light on the planet um, restricted, um, held back, which has made it very hard for 
spiritual teachers to break through over the years. You know, we've had a few high frequency ones come in, Christ and Buddha being two examples. And <clears throat> as soon as they came in, you know, it wasn't very easy for people to understand what these teachers were saying because they were so high frequency. And so those paths got, you know, brought into various religious groups. But the, the, the ascension grid now is increasing day by day. There are stargates like through the sun, our local sun. It's being pulsed through the central sun, from the central sun. The whole ascension process is very, a number of uh, angelic forces holding and building these grids. <clears throat> there are a number of people on the earth plane particularly called to build this ascension grid around the planet. And I've been involved with that, building of that grid for about 20 something years. I was involved with light body, light body grids, which is essentially part of this, this um, ascension grid. And they're building a higher frequencies of light around the planet, which means that new energies can come in, new ideas can come in. Um, <clears throat> old structures are, are not being energized anymore. New structures are being energized. So this is an ascension grid, which we can feel it's coming from the cosmos around us. Um, but particularly one I'm particularly interested in is the stargate of the sun, um, where a lot of energies are coming through and bombarding our planet, really. Um, the other grid is the crystalline grid in the Earth. And this grid is a response to that ascension grid from the Earth, from Gaia herself. And the decision was made by the consciousness of the planet to ascend, which means the the old grid of the Earth, within the Earth, all these old ley lines and energy lines are shifting, some of them dissolving or releasing, and a new grid is forming which is free of the old karma of the Earth. So really what we're seeing is a wrapping up of the, the kind of um, Akashic, we could say, or the karma records of the Earth, and uh, clearing, there's a lot of people working on clearing ley lines and bloodlines but <clears throat> in the Earth, but really the planet itself is the main driver of um, this crystalline earth grid. And really the way I, I use it in the transmissions is I bring the crystalline earth grid up to the heart, which energizes all the chakras from the heart down, um, and then bring the ascension grid down to the heart, energizing all centers from the heart upwards. So these two grids meet in the heart. So I encourage people to, to feel these two grids anchoring in the heart so they have access to both grids. And actually, so when they're walking through their daily life, they can connect with these grids and really releasing all connection to the old uh, grid of the earth. We need to get off the old timeline, which is driven by that old grid of the earth. And so these two grids are increasing in power with every month, actually. This year is a very strong year for light increasing on the planet, which is why we're seeing so much darkness coming out in the news, because the darkness can't hide from this increase in light. Whereas in, you know, 30 years ago, there's a lot of things that could be hidden. Now it's, it's getting harder and harder to hide. The light's bringing everything up that's not light to the surface to be witnessed and released. The light's clearing up the astral realms. <clears throat> a lot of stuff on the astral planes being cleared up. And of course, this also creates a lot of agitation because there are forces on the earth and in the astral planes that don't like this. And they're doing everything they can to keep the energy is low, as I mentioned earlier, but it's not going to work. Um, the, the process is unstoppable. The light is unstoppable. No matter how much these energies try and kick off conflict and, and global conflict, um, it's not really working. You know, they're really trying hard, but it's, it's just not working. And if you look at all the old prophecies of things like Armageddon, and I remember reading about 30 years ago, these um, people who had really looked at these uh, prophecies, and they really laid out what's going on now, you know, conflict in the Middle East, particularly around Israel, Syria, this area, and Armageddon being kicked off in that area. And they're really trying absolutely their best, but it's just not happening. Now, there may be a limited war in that area, but it's certainly not going to kick off into global conflict because the consciousness of the planet is too strong at the moment. So, uh, yeah, these grids are, are shifting the planet from... 3D to 4D. 4D. 3D is really struggle, growth through struggle, fear, separation, consciousness. 4D is where new energies become possible. It's really about mastery. It's about we create our own reality. 
5D is flow, bliss, and unity consciousness. We become one with our higher self and one with our I am presence, which became, means we become almost an unstoppable force. Imagine um, not just one Christ awakening on the planet, but three million. Think the amazing shift that will happen. And this is what is really being, you know, um, what's really happening on the timeline. There are a number of these Christ energies awakening in people, not just one, but many people. And, and also, star seeds are anchoring these grids on the planet and awakening this Christ consciousness here on the planet so that human cultures will shift, uh, not just the nature, kingdoms of nature, but human culture will shift. So that's why star seeds need to be here. That's why we need to be in the 3D system, feeling this kind of darkness, because we're anchoring this light virus, which will bust the old dark system. Anchoring a light virus. This is the importance of our light in every moment. And this all begins one heart at a time. Yeah. What is your process for going deep within your heart, being very aware and very centered, the present moment is very powerful for that, and it's where we have our power. So what do you do to really remind yourself of this and to be really aware of it in every moment? I would imagine that you're always very centered. Well, no, you, you recently moved, and there's sometimes a <laughs> off center. Yes. What, what's your process for ease and grace? Um, well, on a spiritual level, I connect with the grids throughout the day. So I imagine just quickly calling it up to my heart and feeling my whole lower body anchored in this crystalline white light. I call down the light from um, the central sun down into my upper part of my body. I feel these unified. I call upon my higher self to be with me. I, so I do a kind of a quick process like I do in the transmissions, which is on the YouTube channel. And I call all guides around me. There are six angels that I work with. Every day, you know, I'm, I'm always working with clients, so there's these six angels, I, they're almost always with me, really. Um, Raphael in the east, Michael in the south, Gabriel in the west, Uriel in the north, Metatron holding the Christ grid, and Sandalphon holding the crystalline grid. So these energies are almost like always with me. Um, and there are always new energies that want to come in and, and, you know, tap on my shoulder and say, hi, can we connect with you? And I do a clearing process on myself, uh, which is very quick now. Energetically, I have to clear out uh, foreign energies in my field. It takes me five, six minutes, really. Um, <clears throat> and that's a bit more complex to explain how I do that. But I basically got three or four energy clearing systems and fused them into one and took the best bits out of it. So I run through it really quickly in my mind, clearing out things like entities, thought forms, chords, um, implants, all, all the various stuff that can affect us energetically. And so I kind of run through that, but mostly my energy feels pretty clear. And then on a practical level, I recommend, or I, I, I practice drinking lots of tea in beautiful cafes. And now here I am by the seaside, I just go and sit by the sea, lots of silence, lots of stillness, so I can feel how I'm, how am I feeling right now? It's a very important question to ask. How am I feeling? And I scan my body. Do I feel light? Do I feel open? Is there any tension in my body? Because tension is a sign of resistance or energy interference. So I scan that. If I feel open, do my chakra system feel open? Um, then I know I'll be in the flow. So every day now, I'll sit by the sea, uh, tea in beautiful cafes. Um, I might occasionally listen to something inspiring. Uh, I think certainly it's a good practice to have an inspirational practice such as uh, listening to inspirational teachers on YouTube or read just, just five, ten minutes a day, read something inspirational, listen to inspirational poetry or music. It's really important to keep the energy higher because especially if what really attracts interference um, and stops us being in the heart and being open and in the flow is if we start allowing lower frequency energies in and what allows that in is things like fear and anxiety. So anywhere we start to be afraid or anxious, it's really good to stop, breathe, allow more light into the body and go, you know, really surrender any anxiety up to the angels, the higher self, surrender up any resistance. Before we can surrender it, we have to know it's there, you know, like I am anxious about X or Y or I doubt myself ability to do 
you know, this thing or that thing. Once we know what it is, we can surrender the energy and really look at it and ask, is this true? Where have I got this from? And just release it. Allow more light in. The higher our energy, the higher we keep our frequency. Laughing also is very, very good. Uh, I laugh with my girlfriend, my partner, you know, throughout the day. Actually, hugging and kissing is another good one. You don't have to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You can just do it with people, friends, loved ones. Hugging is excellent for raising your energy. Kissing, you know, I mean, it could be romantic kissing or just kissing on the cheek or speaking with a really good friend who understands you on the phone, finding support. All these things lift the energy. And then we can go into silence and feel our own inner light. So it's a kind of dual thing of going within, finding practices of kind of clearing the energy field and also going in the outer world and doing simple things, grounding on the earth, walking barefoot on the earth, hugging trees, going in beautiful places. Gratitude is fantastic for staying centered in the heart, you know. At the end of each evening to feel what am I grateful for today? Three simple things, you know, it could be the sunshine, the flowers, a smile from someone. It's a really fantastic process. Uh, now Wayne Dyer, who I met many years ago, had this brilliant, has this brilliant process which in the morning you meditate on what you want to manifest, attract in the day or in the week or in the month ahead. And in the evening, just turn it around and meditate on what you feel grateful for. This is a brilliant exercise for opening the heart. Another thing to do is be generous. Give generously. Speak to strangers. Smile to strangers. Try and lift other people's energy up. You know, um, without rescuing people, you know, the more you give, the more you receive. Whatever you want to receive, give it. You know, I, for example, um, I love crystals. And I'm always giving them away, and I cannot tell you how much they keep flying into my reality. Um, I used to work in a training company, training people with, you know, spiritual, various spiritual events. Some of these events we used to give very low cost. Some gave away for free. I can't tell you how much free training I've had in the last 10 years. Thousands of pounds of training offered to me, you know. Um, I'm actually doing one now, um, a light body surgery, wonderful course uh, for a few, quite a few thousand quid, you know, and the, the person doing it who's known me for years saying, I just want to give it to you. And I decided, you know, I don't do much training these days, but I thought it's, it's really out there and it sounds really useful and so I'm doing it. And it is out there and it is really useful and I'm kind of learning bits and pieces here and there. So it's really fun as well. So um, I don't, I've probably given loads of stuff there, Lauren. What do you reckon? <laughs> Am I well, bombarding you with? You know, I tell you, I've got to tell you this: that my daughter used to phone me up and say, "Dad, I want ten minutes of positivity from you." You know, mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to give her all this. I used to bombard her with positivity. Then she goes, <laughs> "Okay, enough, enough. I can't take any more. Stop." And uh, so I, I'm used to bombarding people with positive suggestions. Our planet needs it now more than ever. These are beautiful reminders because we can look at our own life and, and see the examples like when we do this inner work and when people are in this waking up process, we begin to see the 3D matrix and you begin to see the programs keeping our vibration high so that we always have our heart open and we can share that with others. And then when we look out in the world and we can feel some fear or anxiety coming up, we can turn it. And one example that is very interesting right now is like interest rates because interest rates are going up, that stimulates the old 3D matrix economy and it's fear driven. So people will actually go and refinance their home mm -hmm. to get a, an interest rate locked in before they go up. So it's just very easy to see that fear. And I just wanted to share that because when we go inside and see that you know, here we are hanging out in an open heart, we can feel that energy and that fear. So then I love how you offered that we have to surrender the light upward. But mm. there also comes a deeper connection to and listening to the guidance within. Yeah. It's really important for Star Seeds to have this guidance system because it's uh, it's really as the world gets more chaotic and volatile, it's the way through, right? You know, it's um 
we cannot rely on our 3D egos because the ego doesn't know the way. It's never encountered this kind of volatility before in this way. It doesn't really know what to do with it. So we have, um, the more connected we are to our bodies, the more connected we are to our gut instinct, which is our kind of body consciousness instinct, which is a source of guidance for us. The more we're connected to our guides and higher self, we open up our intuition, which is a kind of higher level of guidance. So it's a kind of a third eye, crown type of guidance, you know, throat type of guidance. So we, if we have both of these systems turned on, they're like our GPS, you know. We have our body consciousness, which is really good for telling us, you know, um, let's go left, let's try that restaurant, let's go over there, you know, very practical stuff. And we have our kind of um, light beings who are telling us from a higher perspective, you know, in one year you'll be going that way. So we're just trying to set up all these kind of connections for you. So if, if we've got this very earthy GPS system and very kind of more cosmic one, they both need to be switched on uh, for us to really move through the world. And um, also on, on the thing about fear, it is I, I encourage people to travel light. I know it's hard for some people, you've got families and everything. But I know in my experience, um, when I had the awakening, I gave away almost everything. You know, and I know, I know there's a Native American tradition about giving away everything, at least have the experience of releasing all your possessions. Mm -hmm. So I released all my possessions after my first divorce. And then, of course, new stuff flies in pretty quick. You, you gather new clothes and new whatever. <laughs> and then I did the same thing again when I separated from my second wife. You know, we, we separated quite happily. Not happily, but we are still very good friends. I let go of nearly everything. <clears throat> it's a very good experience for letting go of attachment or for realizing how attached we are. When we're attached to stuff, it becomes heavy in our energy field. So <clears throat> we can have possessions. We can have a car. We can have a house. But without too much attachment, we can be light with it. So interest rates can go up and down, and we're you know we're fine. You know we we know we're okay. It doesn't make make any difference. You know I know a lot of the three D people I used to know in London were kind of worried about the council taxes, local government taxes are going up, and I'm listening. You know so what? You know it's okay. Don't worry about it. Or and it's not to be glib about this or ignore it, but to focus on this and generate a lot of fear and anxiety, it has the opposite effect. It generates more, attracts more weird stuff in our reality. So it's really good not to be too um, freaked out by what's going on in the world. We have to kind of disconnect from the heavier energies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of star seeds are leaving corporate world, for example, you know, because corporate world's quite heavy and it's being shaken. I know in America, I've got a lot of American clients and corporate America seems to be going through a lot of shakeup, a lot of layoffs and redundancies and all this kind of stuff. I've got two or three clients in the last month who've said, you know, I'm, I'm being pushed out of the corporate world, you know, and, and they go, I'm, I'm a bit worried about what's going to happen, but also I'm really excited. So mm -hmm. that can happen. Well, I was pushed out of the mainstream world um, in 1997. <clears throat> I had, I asked the universe, should I leave? And I got the answer, you know, just do it. And I did it. And, of course, it brings up fear and, oh, my God, you know, how am I going to maneuver? But eventually, if we've got these GPSs switched on, both of them, we find our way. The way appears. The next step is always obvious, you know. So it's about traveling light. It's about not being too attached. And intuition is so key, especially as the volatility increases. You know, if you've got a very fearful family, you need to kind of disconnect from that fear. Otherwise, your, uh, your GPS is affected, basically, you know. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, so you do a lot of work with your clients on how they can clear these foreign energies out of their field. There's many different fields, and you work with each of them. You were mentioning that it's a little bit more complex. So this is an opportunity for our community to work with you more deeply in what you call 5D light medicine technology. Yeah. And so share a little bit about this because this is going to be a recorded live course. It's a live course that yeah. will have recordings. And this is just really going to help people with their own energy systems. Yeah. Well, this is um, four online sessions. And there's going to be uh, the first one is clearing and upgrading the etheric body which is happening in um, uh, 20th of June, that particular one. So this is really going through the etheric field, the etheric um, chakra system, upgrading the chakra system, 
clearing out anything in the system, closing any rips, tears, uh, releasing cords in the, in the etheric body. Everyone practically has cords in the etheric body, family, workplaces, you know, even, you can even have cords to governmental systems, you know, welfare systems, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But from our belief system, where we have a hurt or a pain, or there could be a program of poverty consciousness, and that hooks into the government or other systems, the banks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The financial system is the most controlled system on the planet. Uh, uh -huh. who, needs, who needs slavery when you've got the, with such a controlled financial system? People are kind of held in anxiety and fear, a lot of people, you know. Um, Over money. Really. Yeah, and so we're 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 being pushed to work harder, faster, you know, all that kind of thing. So we're this is upgrading the etheric body, and for example, the base chakra is where we hold a lot of money programming. Mm. Um, and in the three D, the money program is quite strong. We've got to clear out money programming, and expand our ability to hold money as energy, as light, and clear out any. Um, see, money is a highly affected energy because. Billions of people are projecting anger, anxiety, fear, mm -hmm. resentment onto money, if, especially if you think of the billions in Africa or you know, in, in countries which are really poor and struggling. But even in the West, you've got, you know, like Amer let's say America and Britain, you've got a super wealthy portion and you've got a lot of people struggling at the bottom. Those people are projecting a lot of anger and anxiety into money. So when we take in money into our energy field, we're taking into, into our system energies which are not really great. So we can filter out that energy, clear it, cleanse it, expand our ability to hold money. We mm -hmm. can seal all leaks in our, in our chakra system to hold money and, and so on. So that can be done there. The next session is clearing and upgrading the emotional body. And we hold a lot of emotional energies which are not ours in our system. For example, we may have um, uh, families which are highly angry or very afraid and we can take on that fear and anger from the bloodline in our emotional bodies and a lot of fi most physical problems come through toxic emotional energies locked in the body unexpressed unresolved emotional energies you know louise hay talked about this a lot didn't she yes um, locked in your body speaks your mind basically problems in the heart relate to a certain issue certain energies that you're not addressing problems in the digestive system to other energies and once you realize those energies so the example of my foot once I realized what the energy was coming in and locking into this area uh, I released it my foot healed super fast you know and that can happen miracles do happen uh, um, but the, the, the focus here is on clearing the emotional body the third session is clearing up grading the mental body. These are the belief systems. These are other people's values, ideas, expectations, dreams. Clearing out other people's programming. This is a lot around the ego because our ego is actually um, fueled a lot by other people's energy. It's very common. I see lots of clients who have very strong inner critics. And when we go into those critics, a lot of the energy is not even theirs. It comes from a father, a mother, a grandfather. That's you know I, when I say you know what we go into these various doorways and and when I say what's the emotions they find the emotion what's the voices is it male or female now this may, this may be a female client with a male voice telling them what to do now obviously that male voice is not theirs it's somebody else's so other energies can get in we clear that out session four embracing your higher self this is where we really start embracing that light and infusing that light all the way through all of our fields and really opening the timeline so more of our higher light can infuse our future timeline and even our past timeline really, you know, clearing up the, the timeline so we can step in more flow, synchronicity and miracle consciousness. So that's kind of what that's about. I am running it with someone that uh, I really love, Taryn Slade, who, who lives in Aussie land, Australia. Mm -hmm. So she's down under and I'm up here. She's this kind of, I'm this kind of grounded Brit, even though I'm talking about you know, ascension. I'm pretty grounded compared to some of the love and light community. She's this love goddess. It's you know, that's really lovely and you know, exudes this kind of love, feminine energy. So the two of us will be you know, this down to earth Brit and this love goddess Taryn. Between us, will be clearing and upgrading the energy fields. Well, that is beautiful. Thank you for that. That will really assist those who really want to get serious about realizing the energy coming at them in all these different ways. 
it's really powerful to clear those energetic cords because yeah. that really does limit you. This mm. does take people very deep within themselves where their power is. You've developed this from the decades of teachings that you've gathered, and you've done this in your own life too. So yeah. and that's where the magic unfolds when we can clear this out. You do this on a daily basis then. Yeah. You know, once you've done this, then it just takes a few minutes for you to, to do all of it, and then you can truly manifest that which you want to bring in to your life and into your world. And you are doing a great job of that as you have delicious tea in beautiful cafes. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about the course is it's all recorded, and I'll be sending all the recordings out to all participants. So if there's one session that somebody can't make, don't worry, they won't miss out anything. Beautiful. Of course, this also includes an earlier program that you have. It's very helpful for our community who really want to advance and accelerate their course. Well, we're going to have an energetic transmission here with you. It'll allow our listeners to experience more of going deep with you, Steve. Great. As we say goodbye, I want to thank you for this quantum conversation and truly thanking you for stepping into your own personal power and assisting so many star seeds who are on this path of awakening. Thanks, Lauren. It's always lovely speaking with you. And now prepare for an energetic transmission from Steve Noble. This program lasts for 37 minutes. This is an energetic transmission, the 5D Abundance Transmission, to clear old 3D programming and allow a more abundant 5D flow. Enjoy this transmission, and again, check out Steve's special offer, available on this webpage. Welcome to this 5D Abundance Transmission. Clearing old 3D programming and agreements, allowing a higher 5D abundance in your reality. And as always, open body, open mind. And breathe. With your breath, connect to your body of bone and blood. Noticing any tension in your body. And with your breath, scanning the body and just opening those areas of tension and releasing, becoming more present to the relaxation within your body and also the tension within your body. And accepting both with your breath open and expand your energy field and imagine you can breathe in light from the universe around you light from 360 degrees from sun earth and stars bringing more light into your body And as you do so, give permission also to release old energy from your body back to the universe. Old energy, old lower frequency energies from the collective consciousness. And with your breath, Breathing in more light into the bones of your body. The organs of your body. All systems of your body. And on the out breath just releasing anything you're holding on from the 3D matrix in the physical body.
allowing more of your own authentic light to return to you. And with your breath, breathing light into the etheric body, the chakra system. From crown to base. And again, bringing in more light than anywhere you're holding any energy in the etheric body from the 3D matrix, the collective consciousness on the out breath, just release that back to the universe. your breath, feeling a greater connection to the inner light and also the light within the universe around you. And as you do this, we call the angels of light around you once again. In the east, Raphael, symbol is a caduceus, a crystal staff or wand surrounded by golden snakes and topped by golden wings. And the energy of this angel is emerald green fire. Feel your connection to this angel and allow this angel to hold the eastern edge of your energy field. As this is happening, I call to the south, Archangel Michael, Michael, and the symbol of Michael is a silver sword. And the energy of Michael is electric blue fire. Just welcoming that angel and feeling this angel holding the southern edge of your energy field. West, West Gabriel, the symbol of this angel is a silver chalice, and the energy is diamond white fire. Feel your connection to this angel. And feel this angel holding the western edge of your energy field. And I call to the north, Archangel Uriel. The symbol of this angel is a five-pointed golden star.
and the energy is ruby red fire. Just feel your connection to this angel and allow this angel of light to hold the northern edge of your energy field. Four angels of light around you. Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel. Four energies around you. Emerald green fire, electric blue fire, diamond white fire, ruby red fire. Ask the angels to expand your energy field now, expand your energy field. And just breathe, open, allow. And into the space I call Metatron. Metatron from the central sun to bring down the Christ grid, a golden white fire into the room. Sealing the room in golden white light. Walls, doors, windows, floor, ceiling. Closing any lower frequency energies or openings in this space. So Metatron brings down the Christ grid all the way down to the heart. All the way down to the heart. And as he does so, the crown chakra opens, a great sphere of gold and crystal light opens. third eye, a great sphere of crystal and emerald green light opens. The throat chakra, a great sphere of majestic royal blue opens. Anchor that energy into the heart and allow that light from the Christ grid to begin to infuse all the chakras from the heart upwards, allowing more light to flow into those chakras. Opening, aligning from the heart up. And breathe, breathe.
and as this is happening, let's call to Sandalfon from the crystalline grid of the Earth. To bring up that silver white light from the core of the Earth all the way up into the room and up through your body and field, anchoring into the heart. And as this happens, the base chakra opens, a great sphere of shimmering platinum light opens. The sacral center opens, a great sphere of pearl pink light opens. Solar plexus opens, a great sphere of golden rainbow light opens. And anchoring that energy into the heart now. allowing the crystalline grid to begin to adjust and clear all chakras from the heart down. Allowing more light to go deeper to every layer level of every chakra. two grids of light. And I call upon your higher self and I am presence to be with you in this transmission. begin by clearing some of your energy field from lower 3D programming agreements, energies connected to money and abundance. I ask your I am presence to clear and release all vows, agreements, contracts you have taken across all lifetimes, all space and time, all dimensions, all universes, all realities that inhibit your experience of complete abundance. Remove all agreements, programming, discordant energies that generate scarcity or suffering for yourself or others. Remove all backup programming or instruction sets. Clear all minds, all bodies and the soul records. Retain all learning experiences, free from trauma or restriction. Aligning you now with the highest possibility of abundance and purpose in this reality. I ask your I am presence to clear all of your ego energy field of 3D programming, opinions, judgments about money, clear all scarcity thought forms in your fields, clear all stories that block money from any direction, other lifetimes, bloodlines, this lifetime, all stories, limiting stories around money. Clear all trauma around money from all lifetime, memories, of not being safe to have money, or of people being hurt or harmed because you've had money, or blaming money somehow. Clear all memories 
of having to choose between abundance and spirituality or memories or programs. Clear all conscious and unconscious agreements or programming with the 3D money system in this lifetime or any other lifetime. Clear all slavery contracts. Clear all conscious or unconscious agreement with any system, government system, benefit or welfare system that blocks you. Please clear any agreement that allows any being, group or system to access your energy field. I am Presence, please break any religious agreements that keeps you hooked into the 3D matrix. Clear all minds, all bodies, all timelines. Clear any agreements with your bloodline that keeps you hooked into the 3D matrix. Clear all anxiety, fear, guilt, shame or stress programs picked up within the family. Clear any sense of duty or obligation to experience any scarcity from the bloodline. Clear all limiting class beliefs. Clear all minds or bodies or soul records. I am Presence, please clear and harmonize the soul records and subconscious minds of all limiting programs around money or abundance. Clear all cellular memory of 3D scarcity programming. Breathe, open, soft and relax. Feel the light holding you. Affirm now that your energy fields are sovereign, that no one has the right nor the permission to access your energy fields. Call upon Archangel Michael and the ultraviolet angels to clear all calls, threads, hooks with any being, group or system that restricts your ability to allow 5D abundance into your reality. Break all energetic agreements with any 3D system allowing any interference in your energy fields or your reality. I call upon Archangel Michael and the legions of light, all ultraviolet angels, to seal your energy fields, including any access points to your bank accounts. Please close any lower frequency openings or portals in your virtual bank account spaces. Seal all virtual bank account spaces, protecting them from lower frequency intrusions. I ask your iron presence with Michael and the ultraviolet angels to clear any agreements with any extraterrestrial races that are working with the 3D money system. Clear any alien technology and energy fields or your reality associated with the 3D money system. Clear all minds, all bodies, all timelines, all soul records. Breathe, open, soft and relax. And allow light to be pulsed into your base chakra from the crystalline grid of the earth. Light into the base chakra from the crystalline grid of the earth. Imagine you can expand that base chakra into a great sphere of shimmering platinum light. Imagine you could turn inwards as if you're walking into your own light, as if you're walking into the temple of the base chakra. And in the center of that temple, a room that holds a container for money.
Go find that container. And notice how big is the container. For some of you it may be just a tub. For some of you a small pool. For some of you perhaps a large pool of light. Just see whatever is your reality right now. And seal this container with light, shimmering platinum light. Sealing it, holding the energy of light in it, blocking any leaks or openings in this container. And as you notice this container, you'll notice that it begins to expand into a larger container of light. Expanding it, allowing more light to flow in. And as this container expands, seal the container also with shimmering platinum light. clearing any openings where money as energy can flow out. Expand this container, imagine it to be the size of a large swimming pool. Seal it in light. Notice where money enters this pool as channels of energy. Notice how many channels you have. Notice how wide are the channels of money flowing in as light. Place filters of ultraviolet fire over those channels, filtering out any lower 3D energies or programs from entering your pool of light. Filter out the lower, allowing in money as pure energy only. Notice how many outlets you have in this pool also. Money will need to flow out, abundance will flow out. Notice if they're too many or too wide, you can narrow some of these channels or reduce the number. If they're located too low in your uh, swimming pool, then energy will always constantly be draining out. Adjust the outflow so it appears higher up in the container. So money can be accumulated as light. Now expand this, this container to the size of a large lake. The size of a large lake. And seal this lake in shimmering platinum light around the edges. Imagine placing a dome of rainbow crystal light above it. Mm. 
imagine placing an inverted dome of rainbow crystal light below it. Make this reservoir, this lake, as beautiful as you wish. Perhaps surrounding it with crystal energies. Expand the channels of light flowing into this lake. Allow more light to flow in. Expand also the filters so that all the energy flowing in can be filtered out. Once again notice the outlets, the channels flowing out. Make sure they're the appropriate number so that you can accumulate energy in this reservoir, this lake. And breathe, making this lake as beautiful as you can, sealed with light. Feel the limitlessness of abundance in this great lake of energy. Feel the joy of accumulating light, money, abundance. Give yourself permission to accumulate energy as fuel for your journey. Allow money and abundance in all of its forms to flow to you in unusual and unexpected ways. into this space I'm going to call an aspect of you that's your future self, your highest future self. Somewhere along the timeline in this reality, at some point when you're experiencing a higher 5D energy of abundance in all of its forms, to come and enter this space now. This is an aspect of you that knows pure abundance, that's free from the 3D matrix. I ask this part of you to give you now a symbol of energy. A symbol of energy that represents 5D abundance for you. Place that symbol of energy right in the heart of this lake. Duplicate that symbol and place it in all of the filter pads, the ultraviolet filter pads, so all the energy that flows through those filter pads also picks up this energy of 5D abundance. And breathe, open, soften, relax. If you wish, you can place that symbol of light in all of your chakras. And when you're ready, begin to breathe and begin to pull back that lake, shrinking that lake. shrinking that lake back into your temple of light in the base chakra, allowing your base chakra to return to a normal size, but holding this vastness of energy. If 
feel yourself connected to the abundance of the 5D crystalline grid of the earth, the unlimited abundance of the earth, and at the same time allow the abundance of the sun and the central sun to flow down through the Christ grid to you and feel this unlimited abundance of the sun. I ask your higher self to clear all programming, all levels, to clear and harmonize your Akashic records, your soul records, to bring back more of your own authentic light into your body, allowing more light to be held in your body for abundance in all of its forms. Just affirm to yourself that it's safe and necessary to hold abundance now at this time. Abundance is the fuel for your journey. Money is the fuel for your journey. It's necessary now to heal the split between spirit and matter, that money now is a servant of your spiritual path. Breathe, open, soften, relax. feeling the symbols of light within you and let's thank all of the energies around you, the angels Uriel, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael allow the energies of horizontal force to step back and at the same time thanking Metatron and Sandalphon allowing these energies to step back and just allow just a final adjustment of your field from your higher self, guides and also the departing angels grounding you into the crystalline grid, opening you up to the unlimited abundance of the central sun. Breathe open, soft and relax, allowing more light to flow through your body and out into your reality. transmission is offered to you as always with love and blessings with love and blessings and thank you too for joining us in this heart-based community we are one we are new earth I thank you for listening if you'd like to go deep within the teachings of Steve Noble, please visit his special offer link, which is available on this webpage. Thank you. Namaste. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music, available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.